I was recognized for five minutes. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want to go um, do a little repetition, Mr. Herr, in regards to the chairman's questions from a few minutes ago. So is it correct that on uh, that February 5th letter uh, that was sent to you asking you to change um, uh, references to the president's poor memory? Wasn't there a request by the White House to do that? There was a request, yes. And Mr. Chairman, I think the record should show that the gentleman from Maryland earlier said that that was not, uh, that was not the case. I think he said, uh, nor did he seek to redact a single word of Hur's report. Obviously, Mr. Hur is telling us differently here. And didn't the White House then um, go to the Attorney General himself and say that he would like to see changes to the references in regards to the President's memory? The White House counsel did send such a letter. So if, um, um, if this President was 60 years old rather than 80 years old, um, would you prosecute him? Congressman, as I've said before, I, I cannot engage in hypotheticals. I address the facts and the evidence as I found so them in there this was matter. an 80-year-old grandma <coughs> that came to Washington, D.C. a few years ago, did not commit a violent crime, committed a crime, but did not commit a violent crime, and she was fully prosecuted. Doesn't that seem like it's a dual system of justice where the president is above the law? Congressman, I don't know the facts and the details of this other case that you're referencing with this other person. You say that um, the president is unlikely to reoffend in the future. I believe that was a quote that you put in the report. Is that correct? I believe that's in Chapter 13. How, how so? How is he unlikely to reoffend in the future? How, how, how do you come to that judgment? Uh, as I say on page 254, any deterrent effect of prosecution would likely be slight. We are not concerned with specific deterrence. As we see little risk, he will reoffend. Well, isn't it because he's now the president and he has almost unlimited authority to, um, uh, to release documents? Isn't that correct? I mean, under, as a vice president, he didn't have that authority. Now that he's president, isn't it easy to say that, that he's unlikely to reoffend because he's got almost unlimited authority? to release these documents. Well, that, that statement was based on uh, that assessment of the likeliness of reoffending from this particular person, President Biden, is based on a number of factors, including the authority that he has now with respect to classified materials, as well as the experience that he's had going through a special counsel investigation. Yeah, but look at back at 2011, there were multiple instances where he was informed by his staff and they ratcheted it up to where there was a formal process. You're saying he's learned from that when he's proven that he hasn't? I mean, that goes all the way back to 2011. Congressman, what I'm saying in the report at page 254 is that- He's a repeat offender, Mr. Herr, isn't he? What I say- Let me move on to, I'll move on to something else here. You said he had strong motivations to ignore the proper procedures for safeguarding classified information. And he provided raw material to his ghostwriter that would be of interest to prospective readers and buyers of his book. And I think you said something about he viewed himself as a historic figure, correct? I believe those words do all appear in the report. Yeah. And he was also doing this for business purposes, um, that there may be people that would want to buy his book. Towards the end of his vice presidency, Mr. Biden had resolved to write a book and began work on it uh, towards the end of his vice presidency. You know, I think, Mr. Chairman, this is really consistent with the Biden family when you look at them in trying to enrich themselves. I mean, you're familiar with the work that the Oversight Committee has done over the last year, right? I have read some reports of it. I mean, 20 phone calls that were made to his son that he denied in 2019, 20 shell companies that were created, over $20 million. I mean, doesn't it appear there's a pattern here that where I come from, they almost call it money grubbing. Congressman, what I'm here to testify about today is the work that I conducted in this investigation and in this report. So I want to thank you for the work that you did as far as you could. But um, unfortunately, you are part of the Praetorian Guard that guards the swamp out here in Washington, D.C., protecting the elites. And Joe Biden is part of that company of the elites. And you see it in um, the things that the Department of Justice has not acted on, Mr. Chairman. I mean, you look at the president's son, who does not have to answer for lying on his Form 4473 in regards to throwing away a weapon. You see it where the uh, Department of Justice fends off the IRS when the whistleblowers come with this information. Now we see it once again, where a president believes he is above the law. And there is no doubt 
that this president does believe he's above the law. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from California is recognized.